it's just learning and seeing what makes you happy. It just makes me happy. Nice. Yeah. That was very cheesy, but uh, let's move on. <laughs> 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 let's start this thing, full. Hello, I'm Sam. And I'm Amelia. Welcome back to Ask the Joy Podcast. Podcast where we aim to build better mindset for better relationships. Yeah. And on relationships, we're talking about our own relationship today. And we're reminiscing and looking back on the past year of us getting married. And we're just going to go through some of the common questions that people ask and also see if there's anything different or something unexpected that we didn't think about or things that we didn't see coming in married life. Yeah. So a lot of you newlyweds or married couples out there, you would probably relate to these questions or even just queries that we get mm. on a regular. Let's get started. Yeet, yeet, as it says on your shirt. Can I even see that? Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> All right. And then we've also structured this into three parts. So something that we get asked immediately after we get married, so straight after we get married, and then after us easing into marriage, what's that like? And then some other expectations that we've heard throughout our time until now, and then we'll and then we'll top it off with some things that we've experienced throughout our year of being married. Very nice. Ding ding ding. All right, let's let's start. <laughs> All right, so the most common question uh, I've been asked is how am I enjoying the married life? And your answer is fucking the same. <laughs> <laughs> Anticlimactic. <laughs> no, to be real, like for me, I mean, we already were living with each other beforehand. You know, we bought a house and whatnot. So we already had that home established. So in terms of transitioning into a married couple, it wasn't that much. Yeah. But when I said anticlimactic, it really is anticlimactic because even before we moved into this house, we've done so many things together. I think just our synergy and our dynamic of how we are as a couple, we really were walking around and living our lives as if we were married anyway, regardless of whether we have moved in together or not. So yeah. I feel like before and after marriage life, it felt exactly the same. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, whenever people ask me that, I'm just like, uh, it's going to be anti-climatic, but no, not, not much for change. Yeah, but it's not just me. I think there's a few friends that have gotten married before us and they said the same thing, like life after marriage was pretty much the same. Yeah. And I feel like that's a good thing because it means that you're already building your life to be with that person. It shouldn't be a massive change or there shouldn't be something that's unexpected and you're like, well, what is this? Because then that might be a problem. Yeah, and, and look, there, there might be some couples out there that just date for a year and they just get straight into it. It could be a different experience for them too. Well, not just that. Like maybe they really do know what they want and they get yeah. married. So, But there is still a lot to learn even if they've dated for only a year. By the same time, I do know that there are some people who like the traditional way or just want to move in after they get married. So that's a different experience. But we're yeah. just speaking from experience of a couple that have moved in yeah. before we got married. And then obviously just discussing the immediate feeling after we get married that we were definitely on a high, I would say. Like we had a, like we were just really happy. Yeah, I think... After, I guess, the whole event, I think it was kind of a two-part question, more like a sigh of relief, like it's, it's finally done, <laughs> finally, we've, you know, achieved it, finally done it, tick the box, let's keep going. And the other side of it was more like just enjoying, I guess, our time. Yeah, and the reason why we were on a high, we are both, we didn't really have much expectations of, oh my God, my whole life revolves around wanting to get married and planning for a wedding and all that kind of stuff. So we didn't have high expectations to start with, but because of how well it turned out and just seeing all the friends, all the family and how they enjoyed their time, I think that really feeded into how happy we felt. Yeah, 100%. I think, yeah, the gathering is the biggest thing that geared us all up to really have a good time. Yeah, so immediate feeling after getting married was definitely really good. And then we did a little mini getaway just to 
enjoy our time after all the planning. It does get pretty hectic, but wasn't stressful, I would say. But it's just a lot. Uh, it's full on, and just to be able to enjoy your time together and just be with each other, that was really good too. Yeah, shout out to the wedding planners. Hey, yeah, it's it's hard work. Definitely is hard work, but can be done. Yeah. The next big question that I always get is more specifically for you, but. Why are you getting the question? <laughs> well, well, the, the question is, is when, when are you planning to change your name? Mm. Your Surprisingly, name? I actually haven't got this question. Yeah, I've been asked maybe once or twice, when is Amelia going to change her last name to your last really? name? Really? Who the hell's going to ask you that? Why are they asking <laughs> you and not me? I don't fucking know. <laughs> what the hell? Shit. Well, to be honest, I am lazy. And if it's, you know, <laughs> there's just so much paperwork that you have to go through even when we were moving and then we had to change all the paperwork to our new address that was a lot pain in the ass yeah a little pain pain in the ass but it's just you can just (laughs) pain in your ass like you just got to remember all the different things that you're going to change your name for but then when you're changing your name you also do like your passport you gotta apply for an actual legal document to say that you're changing your name you gotta pay for that all of that and i was just like yeah can't be bothered yeah (laughs) and i mean for me as as a the male i don't really care if you take my last name or not it doesn't really bother me but i know there are people out there that it does mean a lot to them yeah and I think if that if it does, it just it just comes down to asking the question, just being like, "Hey, do you mind if I keep my last name?" And I'm pretty sure I asked you. I was like, "Do you mind if I just keep it, or are you bothered if I don't change it?" Yeah, you can get the double the double banger uh, last name where you can keep your your maiden last name, and then you have the partner's. I did think last name. about that, but again, still paperwork, and also my last name so short, and then having your long last name, it just looks weird. So I was like, "No, nah, let's just." Leave it. Yeah. <laughs> the other one, which I'm sure many couples have been asked, is when are you having kids or are you having kids? And I got asked this on the wedding night. <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> okay. I was like, bro, I'm still in, like, we're still getting married. It's still the wedding day. Like, calm down. <laughs> it is a constant question. Mm. Uh, like, I get asked all the time from, like, just random friends randoms too sometimes because they're like oh yeah you're you you know you'll you only be married for x amount of time oh when you having kids like yeah i guess it's like it's just their way of just wanting to get to know you or trying to have a conversation and i to me i'm not bothered by it mm. i know that some people are like oh my god can you stop asking yeah, me yeah. that and i'm not bothered by it because i know that it is like an interesting question like you just want to know or you're curious to know if these people are interested in having kids or what the life goals are like and as long as it's not like a really intrusive rude way of asking like I'm generally not bothered by it yeah I just tell them I'm gonna have 10 kids so fuck off (laughs) (laughs) so fuck off (laughs) and last one which is something that was interesting we actually saw this as a common question online and having wedding planning withdrawals so I Personally, didn't have any wedding planner with jewels, and I've talked to a few friends, and most of them are just relieved that the wedding planning event is over and just being able to just go back to normal life without having to plan for other things. So I'm on the same boat. Yeah, I think from a guy's perspective, I feel I don't think I've really been asked this because it's predominantly like the the female that looks after the wedding plan. Like yes. that's the <laughs> you that's left the, it all to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the the default. But no, I think it, it's hard. Like it's hard work. Like I said before, it is definitely a lot of work, a lot of effort to plan it out, but time it out as well. What needs to be done at certain times, but making sure that everyone is a part of it too, because it's not going to work if people aren't with the schedule, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I have no withdrawals because I think outside of having and including the friends and making sure, making sure everyone's across it. We did a lot of things where it's very individual. So like flowers, the backdrop, everything was very individual. So it comes to your visualization to try and piece everything together. Like it's not one person being like, hey, this is what it will look like if we have flowers here, backdrop here, your arbor here, blah, blah, blah. Like everything was so individual. So like for me as a Mm. designer, I had the benefits of photoshopping. So that was my only way of visualizing what it will look like. And to me, that was... A lot of effort, even though I am a designer, but 
I do not have wedding plan withdrawals. <laughs> yeah, the only time that you probably would like someone might feel that is if you know if it's a bigger gathering. What having withdrawals? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the bigger it is, the more you'd be relieved that it's over, right? I don't know. Mm, could be, yeah. Let us know in the comments if yeah. you've had wedding plan withdrawals. We'd like to know. Yeah. And then moving on into after having some time, just enjoying married life, just some other questions or expectations that kind of surface. And that is... I guess how do we feel after... Not being in it. Yeah, after being in it. Yeah. We're essentially newlyweds, if you want to call it that. But yeah, according to it. this Korean photographer that we had in Korea, we're still newlyweds, apparently, yeah, apparently. Even though we said we've been married for a year. <laughs> I guess that is new, but in retrospect, like the bigger context, we've been together for like 11 years now. So that's probably why we don't feel like we're newlyweds. With that question, how do I feel? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the same shit you know what i mean same shit different day i guess it i think it just it, i think it's more of an achievement it's a tick box for me so i'm just a tick box yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah, ticking you off see you later <laughs> fuck off wait <laughs> But I can see, I can, see, <laughs> I can see um, other people obviously valuing the wedding, like just the whole marriage and experience where it's it's a big deal. I'm kind of the same. Like it feels the same. It just feels like another day. But it's just knowing that you. I think it's less of the term. What's it like? Life after marriage. It's more of the feeling and knowing that you're continually growing with someone that you're you've been with for so long and just continuing to learn about each other and doing life together yeah that's just what i'm appreciating yeah. rather than what's it like after marriage yeah exactly right yeah and i think that also applies to people who are not wanting to get married and are just together like partners like you said before yeah so i feel like it's shouldn't be applied and shouldn't be a question for whether you're married or not if you're just like a long-term relationship couple I think it still applies. It's just yep. you should be growing together every single day and appreciating your life together every single day. Yeah, ride right or die, baby, ride right or die. That's <laughs> it. Uh, one thing that I've actually heard a few times, it's not common, common, but I feel like some people do get asked this or it's a comment that people make is your life is going to be boring now or it's all downhill from here, which I never truly understood yeah, I've heard something similar. It's like you, it's more like your life is repetitive. It's like your routine is the same where you both get bored, is what I've heard. But I mean, I, I feel like it can apply to just a long term relationship outside of marriage. Like a marriage doesn't have to be the true definition of that. Yeah. It can be just you and a long term relationship, and that can happen anyway. Yeah. So I feel like it's more of, like we've said many times, relationship is something that you, it's constantly moving. You both yeah. have to constantly step on the pedal to make things work. And if things get boring, which there is like ups and downs of life in general, like even in your job, sometimes you're, you're really into it, sometimes you're not. And it's just finding new things to do together, exploring, which goes back into you know, life after marriage. It's finding things and appreciating all the small things with each other and then exploring, do new things, maybe change out the way you're doing dates or, you know, do something different. Whatever it is, it shouldn't be boring. Like that's the last thing it should be because you don't yeah. get married to get into a boring life. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. But one thing that comes off the back of that is people assume that you're not going to come out anymore. This it is true for us, but it's not because of marriage. I think life just gets the busier. best of us. Yeah, it gets busier. Yeah. And then it's just harder to find time to go out, which I know it sounds like the worst excuse and we're working on it, but it's not because of marriage. Yeah, uh, exactly that. I think as you get older, there's more commitments. And the more commitments that you take, the less time that you have to play with. And I hate the term when people say, oh, you know, it's, you're just getting old, you know, but it's like, well, yeah, we just got a time manager, I guess, better where we organize those moments where we can share and, you know, be a part of other people's days. You know what I mean? Like having more friends over for a certain time or a day or whatever it is. There are periods where people, everyone gets busy and then there's downtime where people uh, suddenly have a lot of free time and that's the case for us like there's periods where we actually do get to have more friends over and then there's periods like the upcoming months for me I know that 
we really don't have time. We've got actually three weddings to go to in one month and one is flying to a different state and I've got a baby shower. Actually, I've got two baby showers and my birthday and I've got a fight. Like everything's like all in that month. So it's just, yeah, you just, there's times where you're free and then times where you're a bit busier. But I just don't like that the assumption is after you get married, you're just going to disappear. That's not the case. Like there's more to it. People say that same thing for relationships too. When you get into a long-term relationship, see you later. There goes your life. I think that's different though. That's like that honeymoon phase. Yeah. You know how you're just really into each other. You're trying to get to know each other and you can kind of disappear. We did touch on this on Friends Who Ghost. So check mm. that one out if you are keen on how we discussed that topic. But yeah, I think that's a bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing that I personally really hate hearing as a female is your wife is always right or the girl's always right. You have to listen to your wife, blah, blah, blah. Like, I get it. Like, it's good to sometimes compromise in the relationship. We do it. Like, we compromise for each other. But it's not about, you know, the girl is always right or the you have to listen to the guy, the man of the house has to make the decisions. It's a co-op decision. Like, you have to discuss these things. Co-op. It's like you're playing a game. Yeah, co-op. to play a game. <laughs> Literally. Cooperative game. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, you always hear this phrase, happy life, happy wife, or happy wife, happy life. That's the... <laughs> that yeah. was so confusing. Happy yeah. wife, happy life is what I always hear. So, so long that your wife is happy, then your life is going to be whatever. So, I hear that all the time and it's kind of like, well, yeah, okay, it's true, you know, but it shouldn't be... Like, I get it if it's a joke and it's fine. Like, it's good that maybe the men might compromise a little more than the female because maybe females have like certain expectations or whatever it is but if it's impeding on your own life enjoyments I guess you shouldn't hold back in terms of your own thoughts or opinions yeah you gotta fucking tell her what's up mate hey eh? tell her just fucking sort her out hey eh? yeet them out the yeah, door yeah, yeah, yeet. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah but I'm not saying that it's a wrong thing to say or anything like that but it's just you have your own boundaries as well and if it's something that you're personally not happy about as in like the guy holding back in terms of saying something or doing something and it's actually ruining the relationship I don't think you should be holding back in terms of your opinions like be open and discuss it about this thing that don't always just be like yes okay yeah you've got to communicate and you've got to kick back you got to sort her out, mate. Like you can't, you can't just be a yes man and be, and be a bitch. Just joking. But like you've got to really just have that open communication and set the expectation, the boundaries, as you said. It's really important because I've seen so many friends who get into relationships and stuff like that and that happens. You just, yeah, important. But I have a question for you. When you see me happy, is it really happy wife, happy life? Uh, I think if it's if you're happy, then it's like, yeah. Like you just seeing me happy over something, like getting a cake or something. Yeah, then it makes me happy. If you saw me happy, would you be like, Eep? Yeah, I think I just find enjoyment and it makes me happy to know that you're happy over something. Like, for example, your Warhammer or you buying something that you really enjoy. Like, I may not have the same fulfillment for whatever you're buying or whatever you've gotten but seeing that you really love this thing it makes me happy yeah like it's just learning and seeing what makes you happy it just makes me happy nice yeah that was very cheesy but uh let's move on (laughs) 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 let's move on these are just expectations or other expectations that we've heard or seen on married life roles in in a marriage like I hear this all the time or in the past, it's more like, you know, your females and your housewife, stay home, cook, clean, look after the kids. Whereas the, the males are generally the, the sole providers, blah, blah, blah. I don't see that being the standard or the normality nowadays. It's totally different now. Back in the days, previous generations, for sure. Cost of living, inflation, all that stuff is different back then. So it made sense. But now it's dual household incomes, you know, you know, females can do just as many things as males can. So when people come to me and say, oh, you know, what's what's your wife doing? She should be at home. You know, not many people do say that, but you do get the odd person that would. It's, I kind of disagree with that. Like not saying that you shouldn't, you have the choice to do so. And if you have the ability to do so, then great. And if you have that mutual agreement, then that's the main thing. But it shouldn't be purely based on roles. 
Yeah, and I don't think assigning roles does help you in your married life. I'm sure it does help some people out there, but for us personally, there's no real need for it. I think we're both working full time. We're both doing stuff. We're both contributing to the house and doing things within the house. So I don't feel like we specifically need roles, but I can see why some traditional people, like for example, my dad, is always the type of person that's like, oh, you shouldn't be working so hard. You don't need to work. Just that example is just for me to chill and do all that. I feel like I can't do that. I need to have some sort of contribution. I feel like for us, it's more like discussing what needs to be done. Like, do you need help in something? And if you do need help, I'm not going to be like, well, that's your that's your job. That's your role. I'm not going to help you. That's not my role in the house. I feel like that's not a great way to live together. Yeah, it's not It's not a good way to, to do things. And like you said at the start, it's a partnership, man. Like we should be collaboratively working together to achieve like a, a similar goal. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's why it's important to establish each other's values and goals and what each other treasures in terms of a relationship before you even get married. So these things will be discussed before you move in together or actually get married. Yeah, 100%. Similar to that, finance is also something that should be discussed beforehand, how we, how we see it anyway. Whether or not you've lived together and then moving together, your finances might change, but at least maybe talk about your finance habits, like what, how much maybe you enjoy saving or you want to be saving and how much you need for your daily bills or how do we want to organize our finances? Are you going to do it together? Are we going to have a joint account? Is it going to be separate? Things like that. Like there's so many things, but it's just, again, just a very like casual conversation to get to know each other in the finance perspective. Yeah, I think the finance conversation can be a little sensitive for some people, which is fine. But finance is such an important aspect of life, whether you're alone or if you're with a partner. This should be something that you talk about. I feel in in your earlier days of your relationship, whether it's lightly to something that's more in-depth, but I think, yeah, for us, it was something that we spoke about prior to even getting married. Yeah, it was quite a while. Actually, I think it was because we were buying the house. That's when we started talking about like actually sitting down and talking about finances. And to be honest, it was weird because for me, I've always known that you kind of keep your finance or money talk to yourself. Like, I don't know, I've never just shared it and just be like, oh, yeah, I earn this much or, oh, yeah, this is how much I save. Like, I do tell you that I save, but I'm not like explicitly like, I'm going to save this much every month or every time I get a pay. And it was weird, but it's also how your body language is. If you're going to be very protective or one of them is a bit like, oh, why are you doing this? And like questioning your motives behind your savings or whatever it is, then that might get even more uncomfortable. But because we're both just purely there, just very open about each other's finances, it's actually not as scary as you think it would be. Yeah, I think because we had that common goal just to buy a house at the time. So we obviously had to get our shit sorted in terms of finance. <laughs> so understanding how we spent money, how we saved money, that was really imperative to obviously getting our goal. Mm. Just have that open, candid conversation. You know, start off slow because it is a sensitive topic. Like for you, it was a bit awkward. Just start off slow and then eventually slowly build that momentum. Talk about the goals. Is there common goals that you can work together? Whether that's saving like 10 grand for a holiday or something like that. Mm. Something small, minor to like buying a card together as an example or even buying a home. That's a good way to warm that conversation up. Yeah. But I really do think that finance is a, a big conversation that's important to have. Yeah, and I feel like the less you know, the harder it is to live together or have a home together because you can't. everything is revolved around money, like the groceries that you buy, things that you need to get from the house and just mortgage, blah, blah, blah. And if you're not transparent about it, it's going to be really hard to work together on that, if that makes sense. Yeah. You should have an understanding as to the concept of where the money is coming out of. Yeah. But if you have your own personal account that you save to, you don't really need to be like, okay, show each other how much you save or how much you have. Like that is a different story, but it's just talking about the things that you're going to be spending together and making sure that 
on top of that so that you know you're not gonna be running check to check spending all your cash monies on you know all the expensive shit cash me outside how about that yeah, cash me outside how about that <laughs> but similarly another expectation is something else i really don't understand is people saying that you will have big fights after you get married in relationships you will have fights you will have disagreements but it shouldn't be something that would surface after you get married if you know what i mean like you will have disagreements and you should be working that out whenever you have disagreements like why would you be holding back and then once you get married you're now being yourself and now you're being very open and honest about your opinions it shouldn't be like that yeah i think i've been asked once uh, something very similar it's like oh now that you're married have you had a big fight yet in <laughs> I was a little confused because I was like, well, being in a long-term relationship, you're always going to have disagreements or, you know, going into a marriage shouldn't really change that. You should technically have that explored prior. Yeah. And by the time you get married, I feel like we are both more understanding in terms of what we like, what we don't like, what's going to tick us off and what's not. Like, I feel like we've already understood that prior to getting married. So arguments and disagreements are a little bit more rare, in my opinion, because you already know where's your breaking point. And I understand your body language when you're having a bad day, so I'm not going to go and annoy you for just the sake of just being annoying or whatever it is. Like, you have these understandings. It's not new to you. Navigating through those issues, arguments, and, you know, confrontations is really important for you to handle how to get over those speed bumps yeah so it's less of you will have a big argument or you will have a big fight like these will probably happen but it's more so having the understanding of how you both communicate and how you both work through problems and knowing that and i feel like because you know that you should be able to move over any bumps that happens along the way yeah it's like problem solving as well like even if you don't have arguments and you've got a problem like in the relationship or even something that you both have to face is like, how do we problem solve to get around it or over it? Yeah. This one, also something I don't get. I feel like this whole list is just things that I don't understand is you will need to check in on each other often. Why does it take for you to get married to actually check in on someone or check in on your partner? I feel like if you need to check on your partner more, then it's probably a trust issue. I feel, but that shouldn't really come into the story after marriage. No, I think what it means by checking in is like, oh, are you okay? Or like, how are you feeling? So I feel like if, mm. it's, if it's in that direction, this should be something you are already doing. Like, it's good to check in. And what we do all the time, or what I've, I've kind of established for our relationship is always asking like, how did you feel? Or did you like this event? Or like, and our anniversaries, birthdays, or something that we've done that's very different. Like, what did you like about it? I even like joke around, be like, what would you rate it out of five or out of 10? And as much as it's a joke, it's actually genuinely trying to check in. And then maybe next time, if you really didn't like doing that thing, it's like, okay, we won't go to an event like that. Let's try something else next time. And it's checking in and actually feeling out and again, continuously learning about the other person. Yeah, that is true. I guess speaking it from that perspective of just, I think it's just being curious maybe with Mm. your partner, see if they're okay or if if you need to cater for them, you need to do certain things for them. I think one thing I can see out of this is, you know how once you've lived with someone or you've been with someone for such a long time, you're kind of so used to their presence, you kind of take their presence for granted. So maybe it's just saying, as a reminder, remember to check in with your partner because you could go on and then forget about them. Not forget as in like you don't, you ignore them or whatever, but checking in with their feelings or how they're doing today. And it's just a reminder that you check in with them. Yeah, that's true. And it does make sense when you're in, a, I wouldn't really call it a marriage, but a long-term relationship as well. Yeah. Another one is navigating through major purchases and adventures. So we did talk about the house purchase just before buying something big, but adventures is another one that people talk about, which, yeah, I can see how this one could be something new if you haven't really traveled too much with someone like your partner or you haven't done anything that's major as of from buying a house. This is something that is a little bit of a learning curve, but for us, I 
personally still didn't really see much of a change or too much of a shock from learning this. I, we did go to, what was it, New York and Hong Kong like earlier in our relationship. And I don't know, I just, I think I've, for me, everything that we do, regardless if it's you or a friend or a colleague, it's all just a teamwork. Thing. like you always have to just ask someone just to be like hey what do you feel about this if they like it like let's do this give your opinions as well and then if you find a happy common ground so that that's just the way I work with everything and yeah I feel like if you keep that kind of mindset it's quite easy to navigate through these type of events purchasing big goods it falls under that previous category of managing finances obviously it's a large commitment and I will always come back to that and and say, look, it's really just having that candid, open conversation. Because ideally, you guys got to plan and figure out, okay, how the fuck we're going to buy the shit, right? Yeah. Well, aside from that, say you do have the money, regardless of that, I'm still going to be like, hey, what do you think about this? I'm not just going to be like, I'm just going to purchase gonna this. going to fucking send it, mate. <laughs> and I'm not even going to ask you. Magically, I have a a unicorn in a lounge or something. Like, I'm not going to do that. So I think it's just you know, making sure and checking in with the other person how they feel about a certain action that you might be doing that you think might affect the other person or might the other person might have an opinion on it, just ask. Like, it doesn't hurt to ask. And if they say no, then discuss. Why? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> now, either discuss, you know, if you really wanted this thing, discuss and be like, hey, I really want this. Like, how much, how opposed are you to it? Or if it's not something that you really want that bad, then find another solution, find another adventure, another thing that you can buy together, things like that. Like, there's always a way. Asking the question, getting an opinion, what, is, what does that person feel about yeah. it? Yeah. And it's really knowing the other person too because I know that generally you have a similar taste to me. So if it's like a small purchase, like I know it's talking about major purchase, but it's something small and I know that you're generally okay with it. Like I'm, I'm probably going to be okay with just buying it because I know that you're pretty chilled out about it and I know that I'm quite minimal in terms of I'm not buying a whole heap of stuff to hoard and I might just buy it. But if you know the other person whether it might get annoyed and be like, hey, why'd you buy this? Then definitely a good thing to just ask them for their opinion. Yeah, 100%. Hoarding. Uh, yeah, you with your Warhammers. Uh, not my Warhammers. My and cars. your room. Your room is going to be covered with cupboards. Yeah. Towered through. Yeah, so the, the next expectation is after you're getting married, it's your parents. Your parents being involved in the relationship do they have an effect or disagreements in whatever choices you make in your relationship? Yeah, but again, why is it happening after you get married, though? That's the thing that I don't get. Because mm. you would have gotten to know your parents or your parents-in-laws already. So I don't know how that would be coming in after you get married. Like, I get you probably see them more or, like, get together, do more gatherings or something like that but i guess it really this one really depends on the parents i could see it coming up if say the parents lived with the partner so for an example if like a, if we bought a house and then my parents had to move into my house and then they're a part of the household as well mm, and then they yeah, have an interference i guess for for couples who have that type of situation and environment i can see that somewhat coming up or if they live really close they're like five minutes away they keep coming oh over. yeah 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 yeah. or like you, you can't have private time they always come over and you're like for fuck's sake private yeah. time <laughs> yeah but i guess it really depends on the parents but again it's just having the conversation if they are coming over way too much and you do want some alone time like even for your own personal space or something it's just talking to them about it yeah but i think for us it's like we don't have that yeah, they do live five minutes away from us, but both your parents and my parents just have that understanding of personal space and they're not very, they're not the people that's like, oh, hey, can I come over? Or, well, my mum probably could. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but it's not like every single day, hey, can I come over? Or like, hey, I'm outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that, that would be a bit, bit annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the next one is the expectations about not having enough time for yourself. So not setting aside of your own personal time. Because you're so ingrained in your bloody marriage, you got to fucking, you know, hang out and spend so much time with the other half. You don't spend enough time to focus on yourself. Do you feel that? I feel, look, I think 
I'm ready when to I was be single, <laughs> I think when I was single, that that was definitely the biggest change. Obviously, getting into a relationship is obviously like catering. every relationship that you got into, like from being single and then you getting into your relationship. Yeah, because you get so used to being by yourself, right? I can see that being like that expectation set in a like a, a relationship where you're like, okay, I'm single now. I got to deal with a girl or I got to deal with a guy. You got to consider the other half. You got to consider. What do, what do they feel and think? I can see it in terms of a marriage maybe, but for me, probably not. Yeah, I think it really, again, depends on the person. But for us, what we are as a description of our relationship, we're two individuals who enjoy doing our individual things, but also can just merge together when we need to and just work as a team and do things together. And we enjoy time either way. So if we're doing things together, we'll enjoy our time, but we'll also know or have time for ourselves and we enjoy doing things ourselves. Mm. So I don't think I ever feel like I don't have time for myself. The only reason why I think that is because I just always have so much on my plate in terms of work and freelancing and doing all these other things so that my me time specifically is quite minimal, but it's not because of the relationship. I think it's important to have your like a a recharge time for whatever that works for you but like for me like sometimes i'll just go out with friends yeah so like if your friends ask you to go out you just go and like go out like it's not that you need to take me along all the time or we need to do everything together and be tied at the hips you know i think we both just have this understanding that when we want our own time we just enjoy our own time yeah i think most cases what i do is i ask you i'm like hey we, we've got plans for this day or whatever and you go no and i'm like okay i'm going uh, i'll be like yeah this. <laughs> see you later <laughs> <laughs> my friends ask me to go out and chill and you're like yeah okay go yeah okay and con contrary contrary to this is you have to share everything now which kind of is true, true yeah in a way but as a person who's grew up with siblings nothing different like you share with your parents when you live with your parents you share things when you have siblings so it's not that much different yeah don't touch my shit you don't touch my, <laughs> you're not using any are my you shit. the kid that has the thing on the door keep out sam's room <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much the little thing that you hang on the doorknob no one wants to go in your room anyway because you put boogers on the wall yeah that's it <laughs> keeps keeps the girls out keeps everyone away no cooties <laughs> yeah no cooties <laughs> At first, it was funny because you used to steal all my freaking clothes and wear it randomly. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Like all my hoodies and your pants. I didn't steal your pants. Yeah, your pants are too my long big. pants because you like baggy shit, so you steal my pants. And, you know, you get used to it. But, like, at first, was, I thought it was funny. I didn't think it was really a problem, to be honest. And I share a lot of shit with mum too, so I give her stuff that she wants to use. Imagine your mum and your hoodie and your pants. <laughs> well, no, she never wears my clothes, but like know, other stuff. Yeah. That'd be a bit weird, but. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like getting in a relationship, regardless of marriage or not, sharing is kind of a given, is it not? Yeah, I mean, you're pretty much what they say, what's yours is mine. Yeah. Kind of thing, but. but even in friendships, like it's, you, know, you share things. Like if you have something that you need to borrow or whatever, like you're still sharing. In terms of expectation, that's a given, right? It's a given that you're going to be sharing shit. <laughs> that's something that you get before. I can, I'm, I probably can understand if you're an only child or something. Maybe that's a different thing to get used to, like you're having your own shit all the time. Yeah, I have heard that though, people who are only childs or have been single for quite a while, that is a bit of an adjustment period is just having to share things with someone or Again, just being considerate or thinking about someone that's in your life now. It's an adjustment period, but shouldn't be surfacing after you get married. That's a kind of a weird thing if it surfaces after yeah. marriage. Uh. And to top it off with the last question, were there anything unexpected that we didn't see after getting married? It doesn't have to be a good or a bad thing. Like, I mean, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be something like really good that you didn't expect. To be honest, it, it didn't really change much because like I said, we established everything prior to getting married. Besides the, the piece of paper saying that we are officially married, it was somewhat the same. So nothing out of the blue for you? Nothing out of the blue for me. It was just more so, okay, now that we've got this, let's keep building on from there. For me, something that was unexpected. So people have also said that you actually grow to love someone more or you your love can grow. And I've never really understood that because, you know, every single day I enjoy being with you and truly do love you. 
And the unexpected thing was actually understanding what that meant because you oh. continue to grow. Oh. Yeah, that's right. You better tear <laughs> up. <laughs> Like you continue to grow together, you do things together, and I think we truly do still continue to explore each other and see the different things that you enjoy that's new and things that I enjoy that's new. And your love for the other person does keep growing. Yeah, I just didn't understand that. And after realizing or learning what that actually meant, that was something that was unexpected. Nice. Well, it makes sense because you're basically spending so much time with the person. <laughs> but you don't agree. You didn't grow your uh, love. I, yeah, well, I didn't see it in that way, but <laughs> I can see it like after you explain it, it makes sense because, you know, you live and breathe and you see this person every single day. You see me shit. You see me, you know, all these weird things that I do. Yeah, I even smell your shit. It's yeah. disgusting and it's toxic. <laughs> like you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> derailing no but do you think that you can see that understand that phrase too or yeah i do yeah yeah cool (laughs) (laughs) good chat (laughs) well that's it for the episode guys let us know in the comments what did you guys experience the married couples that is your experiences in terms of after getting married a year did you get the same questions from people did you agree the things that we said, it's okay if you don't, but let us know in the comments. And if there's any unexpected questions that you got asked after getting married, I think that'll be really interesting to know. So let us know in the comments or send us a DM on Instagram. That's it. We'll see you in the next one, guys. Yeah, Peace out. Goodbye.